In this video, we're going to transform our back patio area by removing the old broken one and pouring a new one, plus create some very unique concrete steps, and also adding an accent paver patio next to it. The first thing I did was rented a jackhammer from Menards and broke up this whole concrete pad, which took quite a bit of effort, and then loaded all of the broken up pieces into the truck first, and then into a trailer that I borrowed to remove everything. After shoveling off all the small bits of concrete, it was time to dig away some dirt. And I used this extra dirt to level off an area by our fence in the backyard. Next, I started marking the area that I wanted to put the new patio. This is going to be about two foot further out from the house than our old one. And once I had all the dirt dug up, it was time to put in the form for the new concrete pad. And then as a base layer in this form, we added 73 stone, which is a lime rock that is three quarter down to a powder. After adding and packing down that base layer, I added a layer of plastic over it and then some wire mesh panels as my reinforcement for the concrete. For this concrete pour, we purchased a dye to be mixed in when the truck arrived to our house. So as you can see that the color of the concrete mixture is much different than you would normally see. And although this process takes quite a while, before you know it, you already have your solid pad ready to remove the forms and customize. One of the first things I did was use my circular saw with a diamond blade to make two cuts, dividing this into thirds so that if there was a crack starting to form, it would hopefully be guided to these pre-made cuts. The next thing to do is make our steps, and this is just an overview of what my framing and the rebar that I did looked like. I used the thin 8th inch project panels that were at Lowe's and cut them down to seven inch strips and then wet the corners down to where I was going to bend it and you have to be very careful with it. Just keep wetting it down and slowly bending it into shape or else you will break it like I did on one of these. The top side is basically a three-sided frame that is screwed into those side two by fours that are screwed against the house. And the bottom framing area, I have really long two by fours and two by six holding it against the house going back to the outside of the pad where I have stakes in the ground to hold it. This mixer here was another rental from Menards and it ended up working really well for this part of the project. Now because we did stain the pad, we wanted to try to match the same color with the steps. And so to do that, we had to divide how many of these 80 pound bags of concrete made up a yard and then the stain we bought was for one yard of concrete. So then we had to divide that down to all those bags and basically came down to about two ounces of stain for one bag. Also the bag recommendation on how much water you should have per bag wasn't quite enough for this project so we had to add a little more after that gallon jug was poured in. It took some trial and error with pouring this on figuring out the consistency that I wanted. So this first pour was really dry but I just ended up scooping it into the back side of these steps to start piling it up higher in the back against the house before having a more runny pour. Jumping to one of the last pours, you can see I made it a lot more soupy so it could kind of pack into the form a little better and I can maneuver it around with the shovel pretty good. So this was in between my waiting time of having everything poured and mostly smoothed out and then just waiting on it to dry. And every now and then I would take the edger and start forming the edge a little bit. And as it kept drying out and the water evaporating, I would just continue to keep that edge a little bit formed until it was time to take the form off. And this was in fact my very first time to actually form up and pour anything by myself. I've helped a few times with other things before, but this is the first time on my own. She doesn't want to be on camera, but I did have a lot of help in between a few things from my wife. So yes, there was a lot done by myself, but it was nice to have her for doing a few in between tasks to keep the flow going of mixing up the concrete bags. Now at this point of the process, I think I was waiting a little bit too long or not getting to it soon enough, and it was almost too dry so I really had to rub in and scrape the surface to draw any of that cream part out of the concrete to get a more smooth and even texture. 
So because these are steps, I did not want to have too smooth of a surface, so it would have some grip for stepping up and down if it's wet, so it wouldn't be slippery. And after it was finished, I was very thrilled with these results. I really loved how the curved look of the stairs came out. And most importantly, my wife loved it too. The next part of this project was moving from the pad over to this bed area that was just full of river rock that we had removed. And it would have really been nice to have this also included in the concrete pour, but because there are some electric lines and specifically a water line that goes underneath this area, if there were any problems, a paver patio would be best to be able to dig out and address the situation. The first thing I did for this paver patio was digging a trench and filling it with that same 73 stone that I used underneath our concrete. I put in retaining wall blocks because there is a slight slope in the terrain right here and I wanted to make the pavers about the same height of our concrete pad so I needed to fill in the area to make it level across the whole thing. And after getting all the retaining wall blocks set, it was time to backfill and also dig out a bunch of dirt from inside the area that we were going to be filling in with some of that 73 stone. Now I wouldn't recommend placing rock directly under the pavers. Normally you would want to stack sand above this to make it easier to set these pavers. But for this situation, I was kind of running out of places to put dirt, so I ended up just putting down the gravel and placing the pavers right over top of it. It was a little tedious, but it did work. Okay, so I finally have all of the angle pieces done that I need. And I have this Loctite landscape construction adhesive, which is what I'm going to use for making sure that these stay solid to these retaining wall pieces. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and glue those down right now. And finally, this is how the finished product of all the pavers being laid down looks. The next thing I wanted to do was add in this paver locking sand. But in hindsight, I wish I would have just done the sand mix concrete because after I sprayed this paver locking sand down a few times like you're supposed to do and then it's supposed to dry and harden, but probably two to three days after I did all of this, we had a major storm come through and rained really hard, which caused a lot of that sand to flow down in between the joints and into the gravel. Now if I would have had sand directly underneath the pavers, it probably would not have done the same thing. So make sure to take that into consideration if you do a project like this. 